operated by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars to broadcast number 81 regarding the operation of a hot bond mob operating in Los Angeles. This gang is believed to be unloading for pretty boy Floyd. Lefty James is handling the investigation. That is all. Bird. Take a minute. 
And what we can say is we're going to say on our feet. What's the idea of sending back them five extra barrels of beer? Boys, I can't possibly sell more than ten barrels a day. From now on, you're taking fifteen. Well, I can't do it, boys. And where's your protection money? You didn't kick in this week. Well, I don't need the pay for protection. Boys, I, I get all the protection I need from the police. Oh, yeah? In that case, you better take twenty barrels a day. I, I won't do it, boys. You'll ruin me. You're taking 20 barrels a day. I'll get my beer from, from somebody else first. Is that final, Blackie? Yes. That's all we wanted to know. Dust the racket. Prohibition contribution to criminal history. Beginning with the million-dollar bootleg business, it spread its tentacles to the trucking industry, the building trades, the cleaners and dyers. It strangled metropolitan America, made a travesty of American law and order, netted billions in illegal profits, created a modern robber baron, the big shot, equipped with armored limousines, surrounded by vicious guardsmen, the big shot fought each other for supremacy. Okay, Eddie, slow down. There's big comes just coming out of that apartment house. Sammy, old pet, said, let him have it. Okay, Eddie, get going. Hey, Mike, you bumped off a kid. Well, what's the difference? I rubbed out Big Tom, didn't I? Thus did the vengeful bullet of gangland claim innocent victims. Outraged America's clamors for action. But the local authorities are powerless. Then the federal government throws its forces into the battle. At the headquarters of the Secret Service in Washington. You sent for me, Chief? Yeah. I got a job for you. Yes, sir? The federal government is going into the wholesale crook catching business. They're going to clean up the racket. On what charges? There aren't any federal laws we can get them on accepting violation of the 18th Amendment. And the government can't appropriate enough funds to bolster up the local enforcement authority. Now, oh, wait a minute. That's all going to be changed. The president has promised to ask Congress for more stringent legislation on a number of charges. But there's one charge we can work on right now. What's that? Violation of the income tax law. These gangsters are making millions, and not a single one of them is paying income tax. Go out and build up a case against them. And the attorney general will prosecute us to the limit. Yes, sir. Slowly, with painstaking care, the federal investigators build their cases. One after another, the big shots topple. Change their notorious names for numbers. File into federal penitentiaries. An awakened citizenry votes prohibition into its legislative grave. Congress makes kidnapping a federal offense. One by one, the more lucrative crimes become difficult, more dangerous to commit. But in the underworld... Yes, looks like they'll force us guys to go straight. Yeah? Yeah, there ain't no more liquor racket and... Don't want to swing for kidnapping, do you? No, but before I'd go straight, I'd snatch first. Yeah, that's about all that's left. That's the second story work. Now, well, you're forgetting the place where there's a big payoff. Yeah, what's that? The bank. Get the door where it's kept. Oh, that's one of the chance. You might get killed. What of it? From now on, it's them or us. So Prohibition indirectly spawned the most daring breed of bank robbers in history. Tom Dillinger. Pretty boy Floyd. No cracksmen bees, no snooping romantic midnight prowlers. Theirs is the direct method. Play center, Kansas. Well, Mr. Potts, I think we'll be able to arrange that mortgage for you. Yeah, that's fine. If I can get my hands on that money, I'll be able to put in a new silo. Take them up. Put, yeah, whoa, whoa. whoa. Merciful heaven. Well, right. I'll make no passes, no burglar laws, mister. I'll let you have it. I, I, I wasn't. Uh, you better not. I got men with Tommy guns all around the joint. I'll shove out all the dough you've got in your till there. But, but. Come on, let's have it. Uh, all right. Uh, ain't much, but when you get what's in the safe. The safe? Sure, you left the back door open. One of my boys going through the safe now. All, all we've got back there is bonds. They belong to our customers. Now, what do we care? They were still to us. Well, I got all the work to get, Floyd. Good. About how much? Well, about 30,000 bucks. That's fair enough. Now, listen, you two guys. My boys will be outside with their tomcats on the door. 
It won't be healthy for you to stick your noses out of this joint for 15 minutes. And a few weeks later, in Sheldon, Missouri. I'll get this, boot. No cause for alarm. You'll all be quiet. Of course, if anyone gets out of line, I may have to wipe you out. Hey, pretty boy, it's a big boy. Is it very big? No, not very big. Okay, get some of the boys and move it out. What? You heard me. We can't open their safe. We'll take it with us. Thus, the modus operandi of the pretty boy Floyd mob, which swept across the Middle West during 1933 and 34. Small town banks were their prey, and what they failed to realize on ready cash was compensated for the ease and safety of holding up these insufficiently protected institutions and the large amounts of gilt-edged securities which the safe contained, securities representing the life savings of the merchants and farmers of these rural communities left with the bank for safekeeping. But top bonds are dangerous possessions and so after a swing through Kansas and Missouri, which had shown vast paper profits, pretty boy Floyd packs his portfolio and visits a Mr. E.F. Wagoner in Oklahoma City. Well, there you are, Elmer. 250 grand in bonds. Most of it, the best paper in the world. It's Liberty Bonds. Well, how much are you give me for? Hmm. Of course, it's a million dollars. How much of it is in Liberty Bonds? About 230,000. Well, that's all I'm interested in. I... Won't monkeys with anything else. Okay. How much will you give me for the Liberty Bond? Ten cents on the what? dollar. What? Ten cents on the dollar. But Elmer, look here. That stuff's worth more than that. Why, well, lots of them never had the coupons clipped. Oh, I, I can't let them go for that, and that's my price. Why, that mean that I'd only get 23 grand out of them older. And uh, I got to cut that stuff five ways. Well, that's your problem. Not mine. Well, make it 25 cents on the dollar, and I'll let you have it. Not a penny over 10 cents. But listen. No, you was arguing, pretty boy. Those bonds are hot. And they're harder to get rid of than mark money. I'd rather float five grand of that Lindy Grant's money than monkey around the store than Liberty Bonds. Why? Why? Because those bonds aren't only numbered, but they have the subscriber's signature on them. Why, you have to commit forgery to get rid of them. Another thing, there isn't a town in a thousand miles of here where I can unload them. Those banks you lifted them from have flooded the country with descriptions and numbers of the bonds. Yeah, but you ain't going to take no 90% discount when you unload them. Hmm. You make your profit, sure I will. How much? That's my business. Well, I think I ought to get more than 10% for them. Maybe you think so. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm not paying more. <laughs> Maybe you can do better with the corn, boy. Ah, uh, they only pay five. <laughs> I thought you'd been shopping around. Well, you get a break, then. I'll pay ten percent, and I'll handle all the stuff you get at that figure. Well, I suppose it's the best I can do. Sure it is. And it's your own fault, too. You guys that are so anxious to make a name for yourself. You're dangerous gentlemen to do business with. If you didn't make so much fuss when you knocked over a bank, and if you didn't get your pictures and all the papers, well, I might be able to make you a better price. Well, I'm going to get smart. I'll pull my next job at night. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> You're more interested in your reputation as a professional bad man than you are in a payoff. You can't have both. I don't like your lip, Elmer. Be careful, I'll put you on the spot. And sell out to the corn boys at 5%. <laughs> oh, no. You're not going to touch me, and you know it. Okay, okay. The deal is 10%, but I think it's robbery. Robbery? <laughs> You're a fine one to talk about robbery. <laughs> One August day in 1933, Elmer Wagoner arrives in Los Angeles, registered at the downtown hotel as E.J. Spaulding, meets two friends at a speakeasy on Hill Street. 
You gentlemen know this town. You make the contact. I have the bond. How much did you bring with you? Fifty grand. What's our cut? I'll give each of you ten percent. Not enough. What do you think we are? Well, boys, I had to pay twenty-five percent for them. You're probably lying. Even if you did, you can afford more than ten percent. Well, I don't really see how I can. I'm running an awful risk. Yeah, how about us? We ain't going to run into no federal beef for buttons. Well, well, boys, now, we don't want to argue about the thing. <laughs> Maybe we can make a deal. What do you think is fair? Twenty-five percent. Split between you? No, a piece. Oh, come on, boys. I don't make anything that way. Not much you don't. Now, look here. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll meet you halfway. Now, you know that your figure is a little too high. And you know that my figure is, <laughs> well, maybe a trifle low. How about 15% piece? Well, that's fair enough. Okay. It's the deal, then. Now, where do we start? Well, I know a guy at a jeweler store. I got contacts at several banks. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Hastings. Why, hello, Mr. Weber. How's the banking business these days? Well, we're managing to stay open. I <laughs> oh, guess that's something, eh? It surely is, the way things are. Uh, Mr. Hastings, I want you to meet a good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Frank Gerard. Well, how do you do, Mr. Gerard? I'm glad to know you. Mr. Gerard has some liberty bonds, and he needs some ready cash for a little business venture. I thought possibly you could make him a short-term loan on his bond. Oh, I think that could be arranged. How much do you want to borrow, Mr. Gerard? Mm -hmm. I'd like to get as near the face value as I can. Mm -hmm. well, how many bonds have you? Fourteen thousand dollars. Thank you. Well, we could lend you thirteen thousand dollars on that. Mm, that will be fine. For how long did you want the loan? Mm -hmm. Make it sixty days. Mm -hmm. Very well. You'll just step over this way. We'll make out the necessary payments. <laughs> Thus forging the signatures of the owners of the bond, Wagner unloads thousands of dollars worth of security. But he does not reckon on the thoroughness with which Liberty bond transfers are checked. For within a few days, Chief of Police Steckel of the Los Angeles Police Department receives a message which causes him to summon Lieutenant Lefty Gaines, head of the gangster detail, into his office. Lefty, some of those bonds stolen by pretty boy Floyd last spring are turning up here in town. Yes? Yes. Downtown Bank made a loan last week to a man who posed as the owner of $14,000 worth of Liberty bonds. When the bank investigated the bond numbers, they found that the bonds he'd stolen from the Wyndham State Bank in Wyndham, Kansas, and that the rightful owner had never received them back. Now, I want you to go out and get the man that's unloading those bonds. Yes, sir. Any angles on it? Yes. The man that introduced to the bank was uh, Mr. E. E. Whaler. Oh, you mean that criminal lawyer? That's the man. Now, I suggest that you shadow him until you get a line on his companion. Yes, sir. I'll get on it right away. For two days, Lester James shadows Whaler. Watches him meet with Cole and Wagner. Cole, he knows, is a former member of the Hastings gang in Kansas City, a man who has done time for forgery. With Wagoner, he is not acquainted. Focusing his attention on Wagoner, the unknown quantity, he explains his mission to the manager of Wagoner's hotel, obtains permission to tap the wires to the fence's room, sits patiently hour after hour with earphones slammed to his head until... Hello, Lefty. Oh, hello, Steve. She sent me up to relieve you so you could grab a bite of dinner. Well. Heard anything? Yeah, nothing important in two days. Well, that's the way it goes. You never know. Quiet. The call now. Hello? Hello, Elmer. This is Elgin Cole. Yes, Elgin. I got a lead on a customer for some of those bonds. Yes. Who? fellow owns a jewelry store over on Olive Street. Name's Nussbaum. Good. How much would he go for? Oh, three, four grand. And bring those bonds with it. I will. Well, it sounds like business. What's that, Lefty? We're going to try to unload some stuff on old man Nussbaum, the jeweler. The old man Nussbaum's a friend of mine. Give me that phone, will you? Yeah. Here you are. Uh-oh. 
Let me talk to Mr. Nussbaum, please. Uh, just a moment, please. I'm going to break this here, Steve. Hello? Hello, this is Lefty James, Mr. Nussbaum. Uh, yeah, Lefty. Uh, how are you? Fine. Hey, Mr. Nussbaum, uh, do you know a fellow by the name of Elgin Cole? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I fixed his watch for him a couple of times. I see. Well, he's coming in to sell you some bonds in about half an hour. He's sell me some bonds? Yeah. I don't want any bonds. Maybe not, but you're going to act like you did. What are you talking about? Not just this. I want you to do me a favor. Well, I'll be glad to do anything I can, Lefty. Okay, now when this guy brings these bonds in, stall them along and keep the bonds. Tell him you have to ask your wife about them or something. Well, what's it all about? Well, you got to look at the bonds, that's all. I'll be right in after he leaves. Well, slip up on this, will you? Well, I'll do my best, Lefty. Okay, and thanks. All right, Steve. Hold on the stick here. I've got a little checking up to do. Well, Mr. Nussbaum, did you get the bond? Did they get the bond? Yeah, he did, and for the job of that, I, I had to tell a hundred and one lies. Yeah, that's all the bonds. Well, right here. But, but you better you better not take too much time with it because he said he was coming back in half an hour. I only need five minutes. Let's see. Serial number 618. So 9, 10, 11, and 12. This should Gus Nixon. That's all I need, Mr. Nussbaum. But tell me, Lefty, what is it all about? These are stolen bonds, taken bank robberies, and maybe... Stolen bonds? What will I do when he comes back? Maybe he'll bump me off. No, no, I don't think so. Tell him you decided not to buy them. But he might decide to take me for the ride. Just to be sure there's no rough stuff, I'll post one of the boys outside. Well, I'll feel better that way. Okay. I'll take care of it. And I want to thank you for your help. Glad to help you any time, Lefty. Only, only next time, don't let it be mixed up with gangsters. Okay, Mr. Nussbaum. Well, Lefty, James checks the serial numbers on the bonds with the Treasury Department in Washington. Quickly, he receives a reply. Well, Chief, I'm on the right track. Well, how's that? Washington reports that the serial numbers of those bonds that some of Spalding was trying to sell were stolen from the Osho, Kansas State Bank. Great work. When are you going to arrest him? As soon as I find out how much of the stuff he's got with him. Yeah, that's right. We want to reclaim as much of the property as we can. Yes, sir. I'm going to stick on that tap wire, and as soon as I get a chance, I'm going through that bird's room. I'll be back. The desk will tip you off when he's coming up, won't they? Yeah, but that might be any minute. He goes through his suitcase, and I'll go through the drawers in his dresser. Yeah, this is a nice, shiny automatic. Papers, letters addressed to Elmer F. Wagon in Oklahoma City. Eh. Apparently, folding isn't our boyfriend's name. Elmer F. Wagoner. Make a note of that. Pardon me, Steve? Did I? Look here. Briefcase. Hmm? Lucky it's unlocked. And there are $3,000 bonds in it. Fine. We got all we need. When are you going to knock them over? I'm not. Hey, what are you taking that briefcase for? Why, we'll need that as evidence. Oh, no, we won't. Put it back where you found it. Well, what's the idea, Lefty? Simple. You better give our Mr. Wagner enough rope. Get you at all, Lefty, letting that guy go. I'm not letting him go, Steve. As good as he do is, with only $3,000 worth of stolen bonds on him. If him now, we'd never locate the rest of the stuff. Oh, I'm beginning to get it. Wait a minute. There's a call coming in. Yeah, what's that, Lefty? 
First seat at the cab that takes me to Wagner to the airport is driven by a copper disguised as a cab driver. You tell him not to let Wagner out of sight until he takes off. Then have him report to me at headquarters. Right. Wire the Oklahoma City authorities. Tell them to shadow Wagner from the moment he lands and tip us off and he leaves for Los Angeles again. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Quite without knowing it, Elmer Wagoner leaves Los Angeles with a police escort. Every move he makes is reported to Lefty James by the Oklahoma City authorities. Finally, on August 5th, James receives a long-distance call. Hey, Lefty, Oklahoma City calling you. Well, if it's good news. Hello. Hello, Lieutenant James? Yeah. This is Moffitt in Oklahoma City. Oh, yeah, Moffitt. What do you got for me? Your man Wagner just left Oklahoma City by plane. Great, great. He's carrying a black bag with red trim. Okay. When that plane get in here? Arrives at 435, I believe. Thanks a lot, Moffat. I want to congratulate you boys over there and the, the way you've helped us. Not at all. Thanks for doing it. Okay, old man. If I can return the favor sometime. Goodbye. Right. Come on, Steve. We got a date at the airport. <laughs> The plane from Oklahoma City coming in? Yes, it sure is. Okay, Steve. Keep your eye peeled for a black bag with a red trim. Right. The guy that carries it'll be Wagner. You all set? All set. Hey, they're rolling the steps up now. The door is opening. Now, there he is. First one out. You must be in a hurry. Come on, Steve. Just a minute there, friend. Were well, you speaking to me? Yeah. Can I have a little talk with you? Well, I'm in a big hurry. Not that big a hurry. You're under arrest. Why? Well, Stop the bracelets on him, Steve. Hey, what is all this about? Charges of receiving stolen property. I don't know anything about this. You come along quietly? Very well, but I'll clear myself. Why, this is ridiculous. This, uh, why, why, I never heard of such a thing. All right, all right. <laughs>
quiet tomorrow. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. The cancellation of broadcast number 81 regarding a hot spot mob operating in Los Angeles. This gang is now in custody. That is all. Bird. For description of next week's broadcast, read the Calling All Cars News. Get your copy free from any Rio Grande service station. Charles Frederick Lindsley, 